Hi guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Marwa and today I'll be explaining to you aspects related to mitral valve prolapse which is also called as floppy valve syndrome or Barlow syndrome. So let's knock some sense into this topic. First of all, as you can see, during the phase of systole, when the left ventricle will generate tremendous amount of pressure that will cause blood to rush into aorta, there would be a lot of pressure on the mitral valve leaflets. The bicuspid mitral valve is however able to retain its position thanks to the infrastructure of two things that is one the chordae tendine attached on the undersurface of the valves and the papillary muscles. Not a single drop of blood is ever ever gonna leak from the left ventricle to the left atria during the phase of systole in our entire lifetime. However, in mitral valve prolapse, there is an undue bulging of the mitral valve leaflets into the lumen of the left atria. You can imagine chordae tendine to be like rubber bands on the undersurface of the mitral valve. Due to the undue stress occurring on the chordae tendine, due to the stretching of the chordae tendine, there is an auscultatory finding created here that is called as mid systolic clicks. Do not confuse it with ejection click, which is a normal finding during the phase of ventricular systole. Ejection click represents aortic and pulmonic valve opening, whereas mid systolic click is due to the extra tension generated on the chordae tendine when the mitral valve is bulging up much, much than normal. Well, why are we so worried about mitral valve prolapse? That's because of two basic problems. Problem number one would be that because of the defective coaptation of the leaflets, not only the valve is bulging upwards, but it is putting undue stress on chordae tendine and the papillary muscles. And the undue stress on the papillary muscles can result in ischemia of the subadjacent myocardium. That explains why do you read about chest pain and arrhythmias developing in a patient of mitral valve prolapse. The second big problem in these patients is that God forbid if these chordae tendine snap. Why would they snap? Maybe due to infective endocarditis, due to damage by the ash curve nodules or rheumatic fever. If they snap, you would be having an incompetent valve. And what I mean by incompetent valve is now the left ventricle will be decompressing into left atria. In simple English, mitral regurgitation. You would be having during the phase of ventricular systole a particular amount of blood which could be 10, 20, 30 ml, whatever, depending on the incompetency of the mitral valve leafing, leaking into the lumen of the left atria. This would result in structural damage to the left atria and possibility of left ventricular failure and a pulmonary edema developing in the patient. The blood would back up into the pulmonary circulation and patient would be having features like orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. In Western population, Mitral valve prolapse is the number one cause of development of mitral regurgitation. But we will today study why do you have mitral valve prolapse in the very first place. Please appreciate the overall most common cause why do you have a mitral valve prolapse is idiopathic. It could be genetic, it could be defect or type 3 collagen, it could be association with connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. In fact, the next one is very important, I would definitely like you to remember it, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Well, it's the standard question that is asked that which cardiovascular association is seen with ADPKD. The answer is straightforward. The topic that we're studying, mitral valve prolapse. Other associations are relatively less common asked like straight back syndrome and ostium secundum AST. So once you get the causes right, let's look at why would patients come to you. If they ask you what is the leading presentation, well, that looks a little funny, but that is asymptomatic. Why? Because early presentation, there is a mitral valve prolapse happening, but there is no leakage of blood. So most of the patients initially are asymptomatic, but as the disease will progress, there could be two reasons why they can come to you. One could be due to ischemia of the subadjacent myocardium. There could be arrhythmias, which could be causing palpitations, disease spells, syncopal attacks in a patient. Later on, there could be features of heart failure, which are standard orthopnea PND and can be picked up by you easily in the questions. And secondly, if there is a frank mitral regurgitation, there would be features of pulmonary edema occurring in the patient. So from the MCQ perspective, Perspective, he can say which rhythm disorder can be seen in this condition. Well, the first one that you need to remember is PVCs, that is premature ventricular contractions. And as you can see in the ECG, broad complex QRSs between a normal sinus rhythm. And every time you have a premature ventricular contraction because it is contracting earlier than normal, the cardiac output is lesser. Why lesser? Less comes in, less goes out. So the end result would be dizzy spell in a person. 
In these patients, there can also be a possibility of development of VT, that is ventricular tachycardia, which would be a run of multiple premature ventricular complexes with heart rate more than 100, and this can explain possibility of sudden cardiac death occurring in mitral valve prolapse. Even PSVT has been documented, and the fourth arrhythmia that I speak here might look a little surprising to you, but it is that because in this condition, there would be leakage of blood from LV to LA, there would be structural damage to the left atria and the structural damage to left atria on the long run can trigger atrial fibrillation. So remember that you not only have a ventricular arrhythmias but even atrial tachycardia or atrial fibrillation can be noticed in patients of mitral valve prolapse due to structural damage courtesy the leakage of blood from LV to LA and the structural damage that ensues. Let's now talk about the examination findings in mitral valve prolapse. One, you would be having a mid-systolic click or clicks. Why clicks? Because multiple chordistandine are getting stretched like a rubber band one after the other. Second, because of the defective coaptation of the valve leaflets, there could be leakage of blood. That leakage of blood would result in a murmur that is called as a late systolic murmur. Please do not confuse it with ejection systolic murmur which is a crescendo decrescendo murmur heard in the phase of valvular aortic stenosis. Once you have listened to this murmur, I would like you to pause the video, rewind and listen to the murmur again of mitral valve prolapse versus the murmur of aortic and pulmonic stenosis. I repeat my statement, late systolic murmur is a feature of mitral valve prolapse and ejection systolic murmur is a feature that is encountered with aortic and pulmonic stenosis. Once I've done that, I will now be requesting my patient to squat and stand. I would like to see the impact of squatting and standing on the duration of the murmur. On squatting, this murmur will become shorter and on standing, it will become relatively longer. Well, the hack that you can remember or use to remember this is that if you're squatting, you will appear shorter to somebody. So the duration is shorter of the murmur. And when you will stand, obviously, to somebody, you would look relatively, I mean, relatively taller as compared to when you were squatting. So the duration of the murmur increases. I mean, after all, you need to figure out a way to remember it. So this was just a crude method of remembering it. Let's now look at the investigational choice for this condition, which is a echocardiography. And here you will be able to demonstrate that there is definitely a defective coaptation of the valve leaflets. And remember that the posterior leaflets are affected more than the anterior leaflets. If the posterior leaflet is defective, the jet of blood that leaks between the defective leaflets actually goes anteriorly. Whereas if the anterior leaflet is defective, then the jet of blood that is created due to the defective coaptation will move posteriorly. Well, this is fluid dynamics. I'll repeat that again for you to remember. Posterior leaflet defective, the jet of blood moves anteriorly. Therefore, when you auscultate the patient, the murmur will radiate to the base of the heart. Whereas if it's an anterior leaflet that is defective, the murmur will ra or, or, or rather the jet of blood will move posteriorly. So the murmur will radiate towards the axilla or will radiate to the back. Even if you can't remember that, doesn't matter, but do remember the statement posterior leaflet is more commonly involved than the anterior leaflet. So the jet of blood moves anteriorly. That's because of the fluid dynamics impact. And once we have evaluated the patient, comes to treatment. For treatment of these patients, the first thing to be done is give beta blockers because you want to control the heart rate. Since they're having palpitations, I will reduce oxygen consumption of the heart. So that will control the substernal chest pain of these patients. Remember, why were they having substernal chest pain? That was due to the undue stretching of the papillary muscles. So if I downgrade the heart rate, I will be able to reduce or mitigate the chest pain symptoms of the patient. Prophylaxis for infective endocarditis is mandatory for these patients in a sense that they can develop mitral regurgitation and anyway for us to not let them develop mitral regurgitation, we will go in for surgery that is mitral valve repair and in mitral valve repair what the surgeon will do is as you can see they will excise some defective redundant valve tissue and then put sutures so that you are having a proper coaptation of the valve leaflets. We need a proper bicuspid mitral valve coaptation to prevent any leakage of blood. Otherwise, these patients can anytime go into acute decompensated congestive heart failure for which obviously emergency maneuvers would be deployed. So these are the details that are important for mitral valve prolapse. Keep learning guys because knowledge is power to you. And this is Dr. Marwa. I shall be coming up with a new topic very soon. Thank you so much for your patience and listening to me.
थैंक यू